This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, and welcome to Trinity Church's Chapel on Monday, May 10th, 2021. My name is Peggy Hodgkins. I'm the rector here, and I'm so glad that you're joining me for worship this morning on this rainy Monday. Today in the church calendar, we remember Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf, who was a prophetic witness in the 1700s. Nikolaus von Zinzendorf was a count of the Holy Roman Empire who always had more interest in religious matters than in affairs of the court. Following studies at the Pietist Center of Halle, he developed his own theology of the heart, which placed great emphasis on a close personal relationship with the suffering Savior. This heart religion was not just inner emotion, however, but was to result in a life totally devoted to the Savior. All of life becomes a liturgy, said Zinzendorf, and even the most mundane task can be an act of worship. He was always a champion of the underdog. He granted asylum to Bohemian Protestant exiles. Following a unifying experience on August 13, 1727, in their settlement of Herrenhut on his estate, the old church of the Unitas Fratrum, the Bohemian Brethren, was reborn and developed a rich liturgical and devotional life. This Moravian church, as it came to be called, launched pioneer mission work, first in the Caribbean and then around the world. Zinzendorf himself became a bishop and devoted his personal fortune to furthering the work of the church. He was an early advocate of ecumenism, and in America, he attempted to bring Protestant denominations together in the Pennsylvania synods. He was not a systematic theologian, but produced numerous theological writings, widely read in Germany. In addition to these, he was a prolific hymn writer, and many of his hymn texts remain in use today in the Moravian Church and beyond. His view of the church is summed up in his stanza, Christian hearts in love united, seek alone in Jesus' rest. Has he not your love excited? Then let love inspire each breast. Members on our head depending, lights reflecting him, our son. Brethren, his commands attending, we in him, our Lord, are one. And that's from the Moravian Book of Worship in 1995. So let us say together this collect, remembering Nikolaus Ludwig von Zinzendorf. O God of new life in Christ, we remember the bold witness of your servant, Nikolaus von Zinzendorf, through whom your spirit moved to draw many to faith and conversion of life. We pray that we, like him, may rejoice to sing your praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now turning to the morning prayer service, we begin on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer, and you can also find it at bcponline.org. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God 
and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. And now our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 80, found on page 702. And we'll read the psalm responsively by whole verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered? despite the prayers of your people. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by may pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of James, chapter 1, verses 1 to 15. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greeting, count it all joy, my brethren, when you meet various trials. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all people generously and without reproaching, and it will be given to her or him. But let him or her ask in faith with no doubting, for he or she who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways, will receive anything from the Lord. Let the lowly brother or sister boast in his exaltation, and the rich in his or her humiliation, because like the flower of the grass, he and she will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flower falls, and its beauty perishes. So will the rich person fade away in the midst of his or her pursuits. Blessed is the one who endures trial for when they have stood the test, they will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when they are tempted, I am tempted by God. 
For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when they are lured and enticed by their own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the Magnificat as our first canticle this morning. And the Magnificat is found on page 91 in your prayer book. Saying together, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning is a... From the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 9, 18 to 27. Try to listen for what word or phrase stands out to you and think about what God might be saying to you. Now it happened that as Jesus was praying alone, the disciples were with him, and he asked them, Who do you say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But others say, Elijah, and others, that one of the old prophets has risen. And Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, The Christ of God. But Jesus charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life would lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake, he will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we listen to that scripture from the gospel, I think the words that stand out to me are, who do you say that I am? Each of us might have a different understanding of who Jesus is, might be slightly different. None of us are alike, and so none of us are going to have exactly the same understanding of who Jesus is to them. But I think if we could take that question out with us today, on this Monday, and reflect upon it, Who do you say that Jesus is? Our second canticle is on page 93, the Song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis, saying together, Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see 
a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us turn now to the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the prayers on page 97. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving power among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. The Collect for the Week is from the sixth Sunday of Easter on page 225. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for the Renewal of Life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And at this time, we offer our intercessions and our thanksgivings. We thank you, God, for the glorious beauty of spring for the dogwoods in bloom throughout Fairfield and Southport, the azaleas, the rhododendrons, all reflecting your glory. We thank you for the wonderful baptism yesterday of John Charles McCarthy. 
We thank you for the ministry of all the baptized. We give thanks for this day ahead, trusting that you will be with us, whatever it may hold. We also offer our prayers today in loving memory of Violet Porter and Leah Lewin, for whom the flowers are given, for all mothers that we loved and remember yesterday on Mother's Day. We pray for those on Trinity's prayer list, Kelly, Brad, Karen, Jessica Golden, Alex Calder, Simone, Claudia and Sean Sullivan, Anne, Gwen, Gil, Stephen Shea, Patria Swan recovering from surgery, Robert, Lillian, Whitney, Janet, and Philip. Philip Perigo. We pray for all those whom we say whose name we say at this time, either silently or aloud. Alice and Kemp, Tom. We pray for all those who have died from coronavirus and for all those who are suffering from the, the virus, especially those in India. We pray for all the people of India as they struggle to get the virus under control. We pray for those who died in Afghanistan in the incident yesterday. We pray for the women and girls of Afghanistan for their safety and protection. And at this time, I invite your prayers and intercessions as we have a moment of silence, which is marked by the ringing of the bell at the beginning and the end of the silence. Let us say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. Happy Monday.